Okay, so this is chapter 49, Drugs for Skin Disorders. There's going to be some overlap because we talk about fungicides in a different in a different section, but this is going to focus only on skin. So, uh, skin disorders may be difficult to classify, and there are different ways to classify it, but uh, your book chose just a fine way, uh, and that is by classifying it by infectious or inflammatory or neoplastic. Now we're going to talk about infectious and inflammatory. We'll talk about uh, cancer drugs later on. Um, so infectious can be broken down to bacterial, fungal, or parasitic, and then we'll get into some of the inflammatory uh, a bit later. So essentially skin disorders, abnormality in skin color, uh, sizes, types, character of surface lesions, uh, skin turgor and moisture, and uh, they could have potential systemic causes. Um, We've seen that with uh, things like um, um, inflammation of the gallbladder or, or, uh, or hepatic problems or even uh, renal problems. Okay, so this is table 49.1 from your book, uh, classification of them. So infectious, bacterial infections, so that includes boils, impetigo, uh, infected hair follicles. And I have a couple of pictures here. The difference between a pimple and a boil is really uh, about size and the amount of inflammation um, around it. Uh, impetigo, it's a bacterial infection, and uh, some, some pictures of what that looks like. Uh, we'll look at some ringworm, athlete's foot, jock itch, nail infections, parasitic ticks. We're not going to talk about ticks, but uh, mites and lice, so scabies, is, uh, is, a, uh, is a mite mite problem. And then we'll talk about viral. So inflammatory um, can be either from injury, combination of overactive glands, increased hormone production, infections, um, can cause the inflammation. Um, but those, uh, so acne, rosacea, okay? Um, and then things like uh, dermatitis, atopic or contact dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, stasis, and then we'll talk about psoriasis. And uh, we're even going to talk about uh, this first one here, sunburns, or burns in general, really. Minor burns. So uh, bacterial skin infections. Bacterial infections occur when there's a break in the skin's defenses. Usually we're able to keep bacteria out because of uh, oh, pH differences, and then the, the skin's pretty good at, uh, at keeping things away. It's usually pretty dry. So two of the most common, staph and, and strep, uh, so staphylococcus and streptococcus, many are mild and self-limiting and can be treated with just topicals, so topical antibiotics. But they can become serious, uh, they can be deep and systemic, and they may require oral or even uh, parenteral or IV antibiotics. Okay, so fungal skin, fungal skin infections uh, occur in warm, moist, moist areas of the skin. So tinea is, uh, is the, uh, the uh, organism that, that causes them. So there are different ones, tinea corporis, tinea pedis, tinea cruris, tinea capitis, uh, tinea unguium, which is the nails, and uh, they're generally mild. This is this picture shows tinea corporis, which is a uh, is the the typical ringworm that occurs um, any anywhere uh, usually in the, on the body. Uh, but you can kind of see it's it's circular. It would be, and so this kind of shows how it how it kind of moves out from a from a central point. This would show the central point being between the fingers here. Uh, but you can kind of see that it that it kind of grows outwardly, and I say grows because it is a it is a fungus, but it's in it's infecting the uh, the skin area there. Okay, and usually uh, fungal skin infections are treated with topical antifungals. Um, but if someone has infections of skin and mucous membranes um, of immunocompromised patients, they can be serious, and they may require oral or uh, parenteral antifungals, and we're going to um, talk about those at a later time. So um, childhood infections, so these are viral, and of course uh, viral, uh, you can't treat those with antibiotics obviously, but there are uh, certain antiviral therapies that are available. So we're talking about childhood infections, varicella, chicken pox, rubella, uh, rubella or measles, rubella, which is German measles, and uh, 
those are those are mainly affect affect children. Uh, adult infections, herpes, zoster, which are shingles, herpes simplexes, uh, cold sores, and genital lesions. So again, these are usually self-limiting, so treatment is to limit the extent of them. You can't really get rid of them, uh, but you can you can reduce you can reduce them and make them not last as long. Uh, or not spread as much, possibly. So topical or oral antiviral therapy with acyclovir. Okay. Acyclovir or uh, Zovirax is the, uh, is the trade name for that. Uh, typically, there are others. So, um, so next, those were fungi. So now fungus is fungus. So uh, now we're going to talk about parasites. And there are really two different kinds of parasites that will that we'll talk about, and those are mites and lice. Uh, mites, sarcoptes, scabii, so causes scabies. Uh, and the way that they do this is the female will burrow into the skin and she'll lay eggs, and then that causes an inflammatory reaction, so intense itching. Uh, so this can happen on fingers, extremities, trunk, axillary, so pits, armpits. Uh, Glute gluteal folds and the pubic area, and these can be spread by contact with upholstery, so like a chair or a couch or something, linen, so beds. Uh, lice, however, so so the difference, one of the differences here, just looking at them, is lice are larger than mites. You can a lot of times see lice more, more easily than you can see mites, um, and they tend to infest areas with hair, so that means uh, pretty much the head or the uh, the pubic area. Um, lay eggs and leave debris called nits and so a lot of times when you're looking for these uh, that's one of the things that you will look for are the nits uh, transmitted by infected clothing or personal contact um, sharing hats those kinds of things um, hairbrushes etc. So and these also will uh, because of these, this uh, laying of the eggs uh, can cause uh, intense itching. It's not just the fact that these mites and lice are on you moving around. It's just that they, they actually lay eggs and, uh, in, the, uh, in the skin. Okay, uh, so pharmacotherapy with scabicides and pediculicides. Scabicides kill mice, pediculicides kill lice. And the treatment of choice for lice and scabies is something called permethrin, okay, or also uh, the, uh, that's the generic name, and then the trade name Nix is uh, one of these that, that contains permethrin. And so that's the prototype drug uh, that we're going to cover. Uh, so permethrin, Nix, uh, kills head and crab lice and mites and eradicates their ova, so the eggs. So primary use marketed as a cream or a lotion. A 1% lotion is approved for lice and a 5% lotion for mites. Now, others are pyrethrins and malathion. So really these, uh, the first time I ever heard of malathion, it was actually for, um, for killing mites on, on landscaping. So this, these are actually used in uh, crop treatments as well. Uh, because because you've got an issue when you've got a more complicated organism like um, like mites and lice, uh, multi-cell kind of animal types of organisms. So uh, so the so the treatments can be you know a little bit a little bit uh, different. I won't say more difficult because uh, we can't kill viruses and they're not even alive. So uh, lindane quell is used only after treatments fail. Uh, potential to cause serious nervous system toxicity. Uh, because a lot of times that's what they they work on certain mechanisms that uh, because they're a little more evolutionarily closer closer to us at least than you know bacteria um, they a lot of times work on mechanisms that are that are similar to our own okay so this is the um, the from your book the prototype information for you to go over for um, permethrin. Okay, so the role of the nurse in scabicide and pediculicide therapy. So before assessing a patient, make sure you, you don gloves. You don't want these either, and hopefully you're donning gloves before you 
uh, touch most patients. So assess patients' hair and skin for evidence of lice, nits, or scabies. Assess the axilla, neckline, hairline, groin, belt line areas. So it's really just a matter of uh, going through and trying to get everywhere, but, but in particular the places that they're, they're most often found. So attain a thorough history, onset of symptoms, possible exposure to others, because of course these um, <clears throat> they're spread by person to person, and, and uh, that's why a lot of times there are you know outbreaks in school and things like that. Do not use or cautious, use cautiously in pregnant or lactating women. I can't remember. I think this is a B pregnancy category B for uh, um, permethrin. Uh, follow application instructions, obviously. Cleanse, cleanse and dry lesions and surrounding areas prior to the application of the medication. Okay. All right, so those were mites. Now we're going to talk about rosacea and acne, okay, um, which are more inflammatory in nature. They, these are kind of categorized together, I guess uh, that makes sense. They have a similar similar appearing lesions. You can kind of see in this picture how, how they do differ. Um, so even though we categorize them together, the pharmacotherapies, there's a lot of overlap, but in general they're, they're uh, different types of pharmacotherapy for, for some of these, for these. And so you can see the ro rosacea, um, the flushed face around the nose and cheeks is, is what you see there. Uh, acne is, is a little more dispersed. Rosacea is a progressive disorder onset between 30 and 50 years of age. So that's another difference because acne tends to happen during the pubescent years when androgen production is, uh, is a little higher and oil sebaceous glands are a little more active. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting that rosacea is onset between 30 and 50. Characteristic symptoms, small papules without pus, like I said, flushed face around nose and cheeks, soft tissue of nose may swell, ranothema, thyma. So acne is a disorder of hair and sebaceous glands. I've got that twice, don't need it twice. Uh, affects 80% of adolescents, also found in over 30 people, um, but then it's categorized as mature acne or acne, uh, acne tardive. Tardive just means delayed. Okay, so pharmacotherapy for acne vulgaris. Benzoyl peroxide is, is still kind of the uh, one of the big go-tos. Um, there are over-the-counter treatments that contain benzoyl peroxide. Uh, so that's the most common uh, clearasil triaz. Um, most of us have heard of those. Keratolytic dyes or I'm sorry, keratolytic dries and sheds outer layer of epidermis. So keratolytic keratin is a uh, component of the skin. And, uh, and so this will help to sort of dry that out um, and uh, shed that outer layer of the epidermis. Retinoids. Retinoids are a derivative of vitamin A and they can reduce oil production and clogged pores. Okay, so this is one that you do not want to use uh, if the patient is pregnant. Common reaction is a sensitivity to light. So uh, vitamin A is involved in, um, in production of skin cells. And so, um, so it's, uh, uh, light, light can affect that. The UV radiation can, can affect the, uh, uh, the activity of it. So tretinoin, Retin-A, is an older retinoid drug for early to uh, early mild to moderate acne, acne, and that's going to be our prototype drug. Decreases comedone formation. Comedones are uh, blackheads uh, and increases the exclusion. So it, it decreases their formation and it increases the exclusion. So the blackheads are, are black because they have uh, uh, melanin granules in them. Uh, so reduces their formation and actually causes the, the, uh, um, those particles to move to move out more. Okay, so very high doses can cause bone pays, pain, yuck, uh, fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, rash, stromitis, pruritus, sweating, and ocular disorders. Because um, retinoids are also found in, uh, 
the eye. So oral contraceptives containing, so other treatments, oral contraceptives containing uh, ethanol estradiol and norgestimate may be used. So again, the uh, androgen, the overproduction of the androgen, which is a lot of times what's seen in, uh, in the puberty area or the puberty times, uh, can cause an increase in uh, sebaceous gland activity and an increased production of oil. So this can sort of uh, offset that. So antibiotics are sometimes used in combination with acne. So if, it's, if there's a secondary infection that can occur, but antibiotics themselves uh, won't treat or prevent the, prevent the acne, um, or, or it doesn't do it uh, very effectively. Okay, so oral therapy, isotretinoin, Accutane, is a, uh, is a prescription that is a, uh, that's, you take that orally, and it's contraindicated uh, with the history of depression. So that's something they found out when they were using it, that, um, that suicidal thoughts um, increased uh, with the use of this. So that was, that was kind of a, uh, an interesting um, uh, contraindication or side effect. So, um, so contraindicated with history of depression, suicidal ideation or pregnancy. So that's something that, uh, that the patient has to sign a consent regarding the understanding of the suicidal risks prior to treatment and uh, obtain a pregnancy test in all female patients of childbearing years. So oral contraceptives containing ethanol estradiol, I mentioned that earlier, and norgestimate may be used um, as well. Okay, um, pharmacotherapy for rosacea. Uh, the two most effective topical treatments, uh, metrinid, metrinid, metrinidazole, metrinidazole, metronidazole, shoot, I even practiced saying that, uh, metrogel, and metrocream, azelaic acid, antibacterial, antiprotozoal. So these are um, these are antibacterial, antiprotozoal, uh, but they seem to be they seem to be effective, even though you know the actual etiology of rosacea isn't isn't really known. So benzoyl peroxide may be applied as needed. Uh, antibiotics for rosacea with Pustules, so that's again a uh, secondary secondary infection uh, that may that may occur. Okay, so there's some overlap there with the benzoyl peroxide can also be used with uh, rosacea. So note that rosacea can be exacerbated by sunlight, stress, increased temperatures, agents that dilate facial blood vessels, and uh, it tends to happen in women uh, more than than in men. Okay, so this is a list of a bunch of different drugs for acne, acne and rosacea. Um, some of these we've we've kind of talked about: azelaic acid, benzoyl peroxide. Yes, we've discussed that. Uh, the estradiol and norgestimate, isotretinoin. Uh, for there should be a line here. Isotretinoin. That's the um, that's for uh, the oral, uh, that's taken orally. So severe for severe acne with cysts or acne formed in small rounded masses in pregnancy category X. So that's something to really uh, keep in mind for that one. Uh, metrona, metronidazole, there we go. Uh, for inflammatory papules and pustules of rosacea, rosacea. And let's see, tetracyclines, which is an antibiotic, and uh, we'll cover that later, I guess. So tretinoin, that's the uh, prototype drug. Uh, prevent clogging of pore follicles, also used for treatment of acute uh, promyelitic leukemia and wrinkles. So uh, retin-A and the retinoids can actually reduce fine lines, so I guess that's a bonus if you're into that. Okay, uh, so prototype drug, this is it. So you can go over, go over all of this. The role of the nurse in drug therapy for acne-related disorders. Have the patient undressed so you can examine the extent of the acne, because uh, there's, of course, it can also occur in other places, particularly the back. Uh, wear gloves, assess anterior and posterior thorax, obtain a thorough history, the onset, what treatments have been used, 
and their effects because that can kind of push you into a, uh, a different direction. If you've been using benzoyl peroxide and it's not effective, then you might want to try something else. Uh, determine whether the patient is pregnant. Okay. Ask about allergies, past medical history, current medications. Okay. So now we'll switch to dermatitis. Dermatitis is just sort of this general uh, generic term for an inflammatory skin disorder that includes, that has pain, redness, and pruritus. So uh, usually itchy. So atopic dermatitis or eczema is chronic and there tends to be a genetic predisposition. Um, Contact dermatitis is a uh, hypersensitivity response, so a lot of times an allergy to something. Okay, seborrheic dermatitis seen in newborns and teenagers after puberty, and stasis dermatitis is a uh, sign of poor venous circulation. So when we're talking about stasis, we're talking about uh, blood flow not not moving as much as it should, and uh, causing causing a skin reaction due to that. So that's kind of more. Uh, systemic. <clears throat> okay, so topical glutocorticoids, uh, which is a type of corticosteroid. Uh, most effective treatment, hydrocortisone is one of these. Hydrocortisone is actually pretty mild. There's many that are that are uh, <clears throat> are more potent than that. Um, so relieve local inflammation response signals and associated itching. So that's the way they work. There are, uh, when, when you have the inflammatory response, there are a lot of signals that are being produced, and these uh, corta, uh, glucocorticoids can interrupt those signals and uh, relieve that inflammation and itching. So adverse effects with long-term use, irritation, redness, thinning of the skin, and these are available in creams, lotions, solutions, gels. They can, be, they can even be uh, gotten over the counter. Some of them can. Okay, so <clears throat> psoriasis. Psoriasis is a chronic skin disorder. It kind of keeps going. Um, many of us know people with psoriasis. It causes extremely fast skin turnover rate. So instead of happening, skin usually is about two to three weeks where you generate new skin. Uh, someone with psoriasis, it can happen in as little as four to seven days. And uh, Let's see, so fast turnover rate symptoms, red patches of skin covered with flaky silver colored scales. Sounds beautiful, but it's not. So underlying skin is inflamed and, and irritated. The etiology may be genetic immune reaction. It is more common in, uh, in people of European descent. Um, so uh, that kind of indicates genetic, but it's not completely genetic because it can be irritated or uh, flare-ups can can happen due to uh, certain environmental factors as well. So there are several different types. Uh, you can you can look these over. Uh, so the pharmacology of psoriasis, the goal is to reduce erythema, eryth 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 uh, plaques and scales. So the redness, the plaques and the scales, that's what you're trying to do. There is no cure, no pharmacological cure. Uh, so the treatment can be topical or systemic. Now the topical treatments, uh, again, we're back to uh, the corticosteroids. Um, topical immunomodulators. So this is going to reduce the, uh, the inflammation. So it's kind of a goal. The cortico corticosteroids is kind of the goal of, uh, of that is to uh, interfere with the, the um, I'm not sure why control is there, but is to interfere with the inflammatory response and uh, topical immunomodulators suppress the immune system. And what that, what that means really is that um, things that suppress, so, so this is going to also kind of inhibit that, that inflammatory response. And then retinoid-like compounds can be either, usually those are, those are used along with something else. Okay, uh, so systemic therapy for, for psoriasis when, when drugs fail. Methotrexate. Methotrexate is kind of interesting, the, uh, the mechanism that it uses, because really what it's doing is it's, uh, it, it kind of blocks folic acid production. So we know that folic acid is, is important for DNA production. If you don't have folic acid, then, then you don't have cell turnover as quickly um, 
because because folic acid is required for the division of the uh, the DNA and and cell division. So it slows cell division, which the problem is that the skin cells are dividing too fast. Now it's going, it's not going to be as specific, you know, it's not just going to say, oh, just the skin and not other areas. So there are uh, side effects and problems with that. Also cyclosporin, immunosuppressive agent for severe conditions, um, cyclosporin or standimmune, and biological therapies, alephacept, Adalimumab, so these are monoclonal antibodies, and these are going to target certain um, certain uh, inflammatory modulators as well. So this uses an, an uh, antibody to do that. Okay, so sunburns and really minor burns, but mostly mostly talking about sunburn here. Um, the computer's doing funny stuff. All right, so sunburn and minor burns. Sunburn and other minor first-degree burns affect only the outer layers of the epidermis. Okay, so signs and symptoms of sunburn include erythema, uh, intense pain, nausea, vomiting, chills, edema, and a headache, and the fact that you have a sunburn, which is most people know when they have a sunburn, but these other things can, can travel along with that, which are uh, pretty, pretty unpleasant. Um, depending on the severity. So prevention, of course, is the best treatment for sunburn. Sunscreens are liquids or lotions applied for chemical or physical protection. So chemical sun, sunscreens, they avoid, they absorb the spectrum of UV light. It includes those that contain uh, benzophenone for protection against UVA, and then cinemates, P-aminobenzoic acid, work against UVB, and so, you know, you can have a, a mix of these, and that's what's, um, that's what's going to prevent those UV rays, and the UV rays are what are actually causing the, the damage to the skin. And, uh, and so these actually, these absorb them before they, before they can do that. Then there are physical sunscreens. Even though these are also chemical, they're physical sunscreens because they actually block it out. So zinc oxide, talc, titanium dioxide, so zinc oxide, you may, you know, Think of the person with the uh, with the white stuff on their nose, and these will reflect or scatter light, prevent the fit penetration of both UVA and UVB rays. And Parsol is another skin product that is being used, and that is uh, used in lip balm, which uh, is pretty handy, especially if you've ever been to the mountains skiing or hiking in high altitudes. The uh, the sun can be pretty damaging to lips, in addition to the dry air. Okay, um, so management of Let's see. Management of minor burns. Treatment for sunburn consists of addressing the symptoms and with soothing lotion. So once you get a sunburn, you, there's really not much you can do except heal. So uh, address the symptoms, soothing lotions, rest to prevent uh, rest and prevention of dehydration. So topical anesthetics. So to reduce the pain, indicate and include the canes, benzocaine, dibucane. Lidocaine, tetracaine, but not cocaine, and these are all um, kind of sodium channel blockers. So, so they just kind of deaden the uh, deaden the pain response uh, in that way because it can't it can't move back up to your brain. So, aloe vera is a popular natural therapy for minor skin irritations and burns. It's been used for quite some time, and a lot of people uh, like the results of that. So, <clears throat> role of the nurse, drug therapy for sunburn, uh, assess the sunburn, location, portion of the body, body surf, portion of the body surface area, whether edema uh, or thema, blistering, so for severe cases, assess for fever, chills, weakness, assess skin for secondary infections for which topical medications are contraindicated. So there you get into some, um, some, drug issues um, that the drug may may cause a uh, um, issues with uh, with another type of uh, secondary infection. So uh, topical benzocaine may cause hypersensitivity reactions so there could be allergies to that. Do a trial on an application of a small skin. They usually just to say say to put it on for a few days and uh, and make sure there isn't a uh, there isn't a reaction. Um, that's a uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for for the uh, the skin chapter of your book.